and welcome to the audio file barista weekly vlog number 103 where i talk about audio coffee and other things that keep me busy so let's have a look at the system today Over here we have the Rega Might loudspeaker, my headphone, there's a Graham Slee headphone amplifier that I haven't showed you yet. Over here we have the Rega Mira 3 that I've been playing and showing you guys. You are going to see some of this CD player in a moment and for today and because of the subscriber mail that I got this week I have connected my Nakamichi CR2 cassette deck and I have been playing some of these cassettes in order to see if these things actually work and over here we have the cassettes and I've been playing this Paolo Conte and this sounds very, very nice. The quality of the cassette is still very good and the warmth and the intimacy of the recording is playing very well through this system. So let's talk a little bit more about this CD player. Okay, I did film this with live narration, but it was such a mess that I did decide to do a voiceover. So if my hands do not follow what I say, it is because of that. Anyways, let's go on to this CD player, the Pioneer PDS602. Now I picked this up as I traded my ELAC BS52 loudspeakers in for this CD player. The seller suggested the trade and I thought well this is also one of those things from my past that I never had the opportunity to have one in my house and now I have one and I must say the player does not disappoint. Now this player was first produced in 1993 and I found a retail price of 270 British pound when it first came to market. So I did some inflation converting and 270 pounds in 1993 would be some 562 pounds in 2020 and if I convert that to euros and american dollars 562 british pounds today is some 653 euros and 794 american dollars so these players were definitely not the cheapest around and the special feature of these players of course was the stable platter mechanism according to pioneer to eliminate resonance and vibration in the 1993 catalog that i found online they say that the whole design of this player is and I quote, anti-resonance and anti-vibration. And having the CD tray at the center of the design was also part of that. So let's turn it on. So there is a button to turn the display on and off. This should help the sound quality. And it is also very nice for those late night listening sessions if you don't want your room to light up because of all the little displays on all your equipment. Next to that, there is a button that says random. If you push this, the player will choose the numbers on your CD in a random order and play them that way. Next to that is the highlight scan button. And this button, if you push it, it will play 10 seconds of every track that is on your CD. But the trick is that it does not play the first 10 seconds, but it will jump one minute into the song and play 10 seconds from there. I think that's a very nice feature. And then there is the stable platter mechanism. And this is the main reason I wanted this player. It gives you a bit of the turntable feeling and this platter really runs very smoothly. It has a fair amount of weight and it feels very solid. And you put your CD label side down onto the platter. Now there should be a little plastic window over here, but that is missing on this one, unfortunately. But it is a nice touch that you can actually see the platter spinning when your CD is playing. Then of course there are the buttons for pause, play, stop, 
one button to skip back and fast rewind and one button to skip forward and fast forward. Now you can also attach a headphone and there is a volume knob for the headphone and the headphone part is also in very good working condition on this model and that is nice on a player that is already some 27 years old by now. This volume knob also doubles as the volume knob for the variable level line output and I will show you that on the rear side. There are buttons to directly choose a track number and on the top right corner there are two buttons. The top one is labeled peak search and the other one has a double function and is labeled compute edit or auto edit. Now to understand the function of these buttons you have to understand that this was that this deck was especially made to work together with the matching cassette deck from Pioneer. So the peak search button will have the player search for the loudest passage on the entire CD and play it for a few seconds. So if you wanted to record a CD onto a cassette, this loudest passage would give you the opportunity to set your recording levels accordingly. And you would not have to worry that it would be too loud because you had set it to the loudest passage. The other button, Compute Edit and Auto Edit was meant to help you with a problem that all cassette users are familiar with. Is that last song going to fit on site A or not? So this is where the CD player will help you. You had to tell the CD player how long your cassette tape was. So mostly the 60 or 90 minutes tapes for two sides. So if you had a 60 minute tape, the CD player would play the songs in the correct order to fit one side and then stop. So if the fourth song would end after 25 minutes and the fifth song would go over 30 minutes, it would stop recording after the fourth song. That was the auto edit function. The other button, the compu edit, would scan your CD and try to find two sets of songs that would be closest to 30 minutes per side and that is how it would record the CD onto your cassette. So not in the order of the CD, but it would try to find the best fit for your two cassette sides. This is a very nice feature if you ask me. Now let's have a look at the rear. Not much happening here. There is an attached power cord. There are some information stickers, the model and the serial number. And there is an optical out if you want to use the player as a transport only. The CD deck synchro is where you would connect the cable that would go to a matching Pioneer cassette deck in order to be able to perform all those functions that I just told you about. So I guess now I have to go out and look for a matching cassette deck, probably the CTS620. And all the way over on the left side, there are two line outputs, fixed and variable. Now you would use the variable one if you want to use the volume knob that is at the front of the player by the headphone jacket. And you would pick fixed if you connected your CD player to a preamp or integrated amp. And then you would use the volume knob on the preamp or the integrated amp. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this little explanation and now back to the vlog. Okay, so here we have the CD player. As you noticed maybe in the video, I showed you the button for the display off and if you press it, it actually doesn't do anything. And that is because only when you press play, there it is playing. And now the display goes off and on and off and on. So that's something that confused me at the beginning. But also if you turn the display off, it still has a little red notification that the display is off while the display is on, of course. So that's interesting. Anyways, this is what I've been playing with. I've shown you the Rega Mira 3 also. And you know what? This combination, let me back up a little bit. This combination is actually very, very nice. Okay, so I've been playing with some new stuff on my uh, camera setup. So I have purchased a new 
microphone. I hope you have heard this in the last vlog. And the other thing is that I have purchased a gimbal. Trying to find out if I can make some more smooth transitions and give you some better video quality because that's something that I'm trying to work on. I don't know if it's working and I still have to learn how this thing actually works but for now I'm pretty happy with it. I hope this feels like a little bit more of a smooth transition. I have to get used to the weight of the gimbal because it is pretty heavy but I think I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so this is the whole setup that I've been playing uh, for the last week and this is a very musical combination. I've said it a, a few times now, this is not completely and perfectly the best sounding setup. It may be a little bit too dark, the fine resolution details, stuff like that, it's not there, but for musicality and if we look at what I paid for it. So if I'm going the might loudspeakers, here we have the wait. Okay, I'm still learning how this works. So we have the might loudspeakers. Over here we have the CD player. We have the amplifier, the Rega, and for that setup I paid just over 500 bucks so I think listening to the quality of this system that is pretty 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 good and all right there's one more thing that I would like to show you and that's over there you can see a little black cassette left of the blue sound and right of the PS audio. That is a solid state drive. So let's have a little bit of a look why I am showing you that. Today I picked up a portable SSD, a one terabyte Samsung. And the reason I picked this up is because of something that I've been wanting to try for a very long time now. As you know, I have my Blue Sound Note 2i streamer, but you do have a possibility to put on a drive with music files on it and play from that drive through the Blue Note. And I also have this Oppo Blu-ray player, which I use as a Blu-ray player or a CD transport, but there is this possibility that you have to connect some USB drives on there and play the music from that drive through the Oppo player. I can play it directly from the drive through the Blue Note. I can play it directly from the drive through the Oppo or I can play it directly from one of these two but still have it converted by this PS Audio DA converter. So Let's see what is happening. And over here we have the drive unboxed. It is a very simple thing. One port for, uh, this is USB-C. And, well, that's it. And they'll give you a USB to USB-C connector with it. So now let's put some music on this drive and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, there are some beautiful songs on here. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's connect this and see what happens. So it is connected to the blue sound. Let's play some music. Okay, so now you know why I have this thing there and I have been listening to it. To me, the difference is 
Sometimes I prefer playing from the SSD, sometimes I'm not. So I'm not sure if that really is something that you should pursue. I think it plays just as well from my NAS as it plays from my SSD over here. If you have any other experiences, please let us know in the comment section. Maybe I've overlooked something, but for now, it's nice to have this portable SSD and take your music to anywhere you like. But if there is a difference between playing from my NAS and playing from the SSD, I don't think there is. Okay. So one last shot of the whole system. Then let's see if we can finish up here. Okay, you guys, that's all for today. Today is Friday. I'm wishing you a very nice weekend and I'll see you next week.